Port Phillip's family of dolphins share their home with over 3 million people who live in the catchment surrounding the bay. More than 60 young leaders in the Dolphin Research Institute's ICI Care Ambassador Program attended a workshop to discover firsthand what our system of drones does to the dolphin's home. Today we're at Banyan Reserve, as I said, and this is a retarding basin. So this, uh, first glance, doesn't look obvious. It's, there's no creek flowing out of it, but what you have here is underground drains where the water that comes down from the surrounding area will go into the ocean. This workshop is all about catchments, and I sent you guys out uh, an assembly script already, so we've done a little bit about what a catchment is. And what we're going to look at today is what are they, where do they go, and what affects the health of them, okay? So what I'm going to come in is some catchment maps here for everybody, so there's one between two. What else might come down the drain? Pesticides. Pesticides, fantastic. And what goes with pesticides? What else do farmers sometimes use to help their crops grow? Fertilizers, all this can wash off. So all the, the schools and the shopping centres, all the litter that falls into the, the gutters there makes its way down through this waterway, down in through what we call a silt trap, which catches all the soil and so forth, and then flushes through here, the other will go to you guys, comes through these nets. Well, essentially that's the one thing that nature can't really stop is to be filled up with um, leaves. Coffee cups, wrappers, cans, various plastic bags, all stuff that doesn't break down naturally. We don't want it going into our oceans and waterways, do we? Bad for us. way too much rubbish so we're going to have to all concentrate on trying to stop everyone dumping rubbish on the street. My name's Lisa, I'm from Melbourne Water and I'm a Water Watch coordinator so I'm out here today to give you, with you some sessions on water quality. So coming out of this retarding basin here, the water travels all this way, almost to the beach here and then heads down here, right down to Frankston today and do a couple of tests. We're going to be using this piece of equipment here. It's called a turbidity tube. this colour wheel into the holder like that. The wetlands act like a giant aquarium filter, cleaning storm water before it passes into the environment. Sediments settle out from the storm water to the wetlands floor, but can easily be stirred up. Nutrients and other pollutants are absorbed by the vegetation within the wetlands ecosystem. After filtering through plants and gravel, the water finally makes its journey into the drainage system and ultimately out into the environment. The water flows through a system of drains and canals until it reaches eel race drain. This is an unusual system where salt water is actually pumped from Patterson Lakes to maintain water flow along Cannonook Creek. Pollution traps along the way try and stop litter and other pollutants from reaching the marine environment. 
the water continues its journey down Cannonock Creek to Seaford. Dozens of drains along the way add unfiltered storm water directly into the creek. The creek's last pollution trap does its best to stop rubbish from reaching the bay. The creek finally makes its way to Frankston, where it passes under the Nepean Highway and flows between the city centre and the bay. Giant stormwater drains funnel everything that is washed off the streets of Frankston into the creek. Most of these drains are not filtered, so everything enters the environment. The water finally passes under Frankston's Bridge and out into Port Phillip, the Dolphin's home. It's important to remember where our journey started and what it must be like for our dolphins to live at the end of drains used by three and a half million people. We need to improve the way we live in the catchment that surrounds our wonderful bay.